is it time, Raggedy Ann? Oh, not yet, Raggedy Andy. Oh, but soon now. And I want all the boys and girls to be here. Larry, Jeannie, Susan O'Donnell. My Raggedy Ann, come out when you can. The melody music to the Raggedy Ann Show with Paula Stone. Of course, you know Raggedy Ann, the loving, lovable doll that lives in the hearts and homes of millions everywhere. And now she's brought to life on the air by RCA Victor, makers of the finest in records and albums for boys and girls. Fun, excitement, stories, and music, all on your RCA Victor record. Just put it on your Victrola radio phonograph and let her spin. You'll have the best time you ever had, any time, just as many times as you want. Just make sure your records and phonograph bear the famous Victor Dog trademark of RCA Victor. It's almost 5 o'clock, and the door of the RCA Victor toy and record shop has just closed for the day. As you know, this big door closes out the world, and then all the dolls, the clowns, the electric trains, and the monkey on the string all go to sleep. That is, all except Raggedy Ann and her twin brother, Raggedy Andy. RCA Victor Record Shop becomes their very, very own wonderland. Theirs and yours. Oh, Andy, I have had such a terrible day. I guess I must have been picked up and put down a hundred times. What about me, Raggedy Ann? Sometimes when people pick me up, they don't put me down right side oh. up. <laughs> oh, but Andy, why is it everybody says I'm cute and not beautiful like Marie the French doll over here? But if you were beautiful, you wouldn't be Raggedy Ann. That ropey hair. Oh. oh, but it doesn't make me feel any better. Oh, well, come on, Andy. We have to get over to the music box. It's almost time for the good fairy. Oh, there. Hello, Raggedy Ann. Raggedy Andy. Hello, Hello good, good fairy. fairy. You're going to tell us a story? Come on, tell us no, a no. story. Wait, stop bouncing up and down, Andy. I know you're waiting for a story. But first, I want to know if anything exciting happened in the store today. Oh, yes, and it was awful, good fairy. A little boy came in with his mother who was buying him a present. And he picked up a pop gun and he shot it right up total the tumbling clown. Oh, dear. Oh, why do little boys do things like that? Because they're little boys. Now, Andy, you stay away from that pop gun. I was only looking at it. Uh-huh. Oh, I guess even boy dolls will be boy dolls. Oh, but now your story, good fairy. For the story, please. Yeah, please, please. Well, it's all about Peter Churchmouse. This is a story I heard right from a man who lives right next door to the church where Peter lives. Oh, yes? Mm -hmm. oh. oh, he knows it upside down and backwards. And here's how he told it to me. Once upon a time, there was a very small mouse named Peter Churchmouse. Who lived in to Parson Pease Porridge. Who was a very, he was a little bit pompous. Now, Parson Pease Porridge had a wonderful pipe organ. And a very fine collection basket lined with red felt. And a lot of handsome hymn books. And a big, beautifully bound Bible that always lay right in the middle of the desk in his study. Peter Churchmouse thought these things were very nice, especially the pipe organ, because it sounded so nice when he ran up and down its keys. But Parson Peas Porridge had two things that Peter Churchmouse thought were not at all nice. Very bad eyesight, and he had a terrible big wooden rat trap. He had such bad eyesight that he couldn't see Peter Churchmouse at all, so he never left anything out for Peter to eat. And poor Peter had to chew corners off the hymn books and chew holes in the red felt lining of the collection basket to make Parson Pease Porridge think there were some rats in his church so that he would put cheese on the rat trap. That cheese was all Peter ever had to eat. Every, the cheese that Parson Pease Porridge put on it every day. Pete, he was so small and the rat trap eager to eat the cheese, its terrible spring just went right over his head. Like that. 
but it almost happened. It was very hard on his nerves. And to soothe them, Peter would make a poem every night after he had eaten his cheese. One night when he had finished, he raised his eyebrows the way he always did when he was going to make a poem, and then he jumped up onto the keys of Parson Pease Porridge's pipe organ. And this is the... Merely wish the cheese I ate on a plate that would not snap because I... Now, said Peter Churchmouse, I felt lining of the collection basket so that Parson Pease Porridge will put more cheese on the rat trap for tomorrow. Well, the next morning when Parson Pease Porridge came into the church... He looked at his best collection basket. I'll be twitched, he cried. These rats will be the ruination of me. How can I collect the collection with a hole in the collection basket? Why, the money will just fall right back into the congregation's pockets. I know what I'll do, he said. If my rat trap won't catch these rats, I'll get a cat. Oh, gee, poor Peter Churchmouse. And does the cat eat them all up? I bet you. I just bet you. Now, wait a minute, Andy. I want you to hear this just as I heard it. Well, you can imagine how Peter felt when he first saw the cat. Hello, he said. The kitten walked away from the bowl of milk. And sat down. And looked at Peter. I am afraid of cats, said Peter. Are you a cat? And the kitten said, Who, me? No, I'm not a cat. I'm a kitten. And my name is Gabriel. Say, are you a rat? Who, me, said Peter? No, I'm only a poor church mouse. And my name is Peter. Hiya, Peter, said Gabriel. I'm glad you're not a rat, because I like you. And I'm supposed to scare the rats away. The rats that have been eating holes in things. Well, said Peter, I'm glad you're not a cat, because I like you, too. Say, would you like to hear me play a piece on Parson Pease Porridge's pipe organ? I should say I would, said Gabriel. What piece will you play? Oh, said Peter, I'll play the piece that Parson Pease Porridge played just now. Only I'll play it better. And he jumped to the keys of the pipe organ. Was better, Gabriel said. Only it didn't have any bass notes in it the way it did when Parson Pease Porridge played it. That, said Peter, is because the bass note keys are way down there. And he pointed down to the bass keys near the floor. Parson Pease Porridge plays them with his feet, said Peter. In that case, Gabriel said, I'll play the bass notes with my feet. And she walked over to the foot of the pipe organ. <laughs> now then, she said, let's go. Oh, golly, don't they play lovely together? Peter on the keys and Gabriel on the foot pedal. Gee, the cat didn't even touch him. Oh, Oh, Andy. (laughs) Well, anyway... Peter heard the parson say that when little children drink a lot of milk, they grow big and strong. So for days and days, he drank almost all of Gabriel's milk. Oh, and did he get big? As big as a rat? Oh, no. No, his little tummy just puffed out a bit more. He looked like a pudgy little ball of gray wool. (laughs) After a while, the parson got angry when he had to keep filling Gabriel's saucer again and again. And each time, he'd say, I'll be twitched. I'll be twitched. <laughs> oh, oh, they tried all sorts of things to get Parson Pease Porridge to notice Peter. And then Peter got an idea. Oh. The little red bed he always slept on. Why, he put that right on the parson's desk. Oh, I bet that worked. Alas, no. Oh, the parson saw it all right. But all he said was, I wondered where my red mitten was. And he just picked it up and put it in his pocket. Oh, oh sure. Well, Peter Churchmouse was so discouraged and disappointed, he ran to the keys of the pipe organ and composed another one of his little poems, all about his bed and his predicament. I had a very lovely bed, my very lovely bed was red, but now it's gone and I have none, I have no place to lay my head, how very, very, very sad. The only bed I ever had. Oh, what a pearl.
matter, Dick Hemmen? I'm so sad. Girls, always looking for something to cry about. Well, they tried everything, Peter and Gabriel, even making footprints on the parson's Sunday sermon. And that was when they hit on the most colossal super idea of all. Oh, what was that? The Peter Church Mouse bit a big hole right in the middle of the sermon Parson Pease Parge was going to give that very same oh, Sunday. Oh, for Peter. <laughs> I bet that put the parson in the hole. Oh, it was a beauty, all right, and it couldn't be missed. Well, even Gabriel the Kitten had to marvel at it. My admired Gabriel, the biggest hole I ever saw. The biggest hole I ever bit, cried Peter. If that won't make him notice me, I'm sure I don't know what will. Now, the next morning, it was Sunday, Parson Pease Porridge came in. With his new spectacles on and picked up his sermon. Upon my soul, he cried. These are not footnotes. These are footprints. I have a church mouse, and the poor little fellow has eaten all these holes in things to tell me he's hungry. And he went out and got the biggest piece of cheese Peter had ever seen. Then he looked at the big hole right through the middle of his sermon. Huh, he said. Owing to this slight uh, accident, I must find a new sermon for today. So I shall speak about kindness to very little animals. Peter Churchmouse and Gabriel were so happy, they jumped right to the keys of Parson Pease Porridge's pipe organ. <laughs> Oh, oh, I'm so glad, good fairy, that everything worked out all right. No, it was okay. But I wonder what would have happened if Gabriel was a real big tomcat and Peter was a real fierce rat. Oh. Jiminy, I bet you that would have led to a fight all right. <laughs> oh, what story are you going to have for us next time? Well, I'll tell you all about that in just a moment, Raggedy Ann. And I can promise you, it'll be a lot of exciting fun. And thank you for that moment, good fairy. Because I want to tell all the boys and girls about that wonderful RCA Victor album about Peter Churchmouse. Yes, what we've heard today is just a tiny taste of the fun and adventure Peter and Gabriel have. You can easily tell the album, too. On the front, in red and green and yellow, there's a picture of Peter Churchmouse himself biting his way through Parson Pease Porridge hymn book. Oh, by the way, that man who lives right next door to the church, you know, the one the good fairy told us about, well, he tells you the whole story himself. Of course, Peter and Gabriel have more songs and poems when they take over the pipe organ. It's a beauty. The Peter Church Mouse album. And it's waiting for you right now at the Melody Music Shop, your RCA Victor dealer. Well, Raggedy Ann, Raggedy Andy, here's our story for next time. Oh, what's it going to be? It's about the smallest and the most unhappy musical instrument in the whole band. Oh, what is it? Pee-wee the Piccolo. Oh, oh he has a dreadful time competing with all those bigger and shinier and deeper instruments. But then, after a lot of exciting adventures, he... What? He what? what? Oh, uh, well, we don't want to go into that right now because... Well, that's my surprise for next time. Goodbye, Raggedy oh, Ann. Goodbye, good fairy. Oh, so long, good fairy. Oh, say, uh, Andy, we have to get going, too. We have to get a little sleep. Oh, yes, another busy day in the store tomorrow. Being picked up and down, up and down. Well, goodbye, Luana, Malin, Robert, Charlotte, Michael. My Raggedy Ann. Come out when you can. So long, Raggedy Ann, Raggedy Andy. Be with us, boys and girls, when RCA Victor brings you another Raggedy Ann show with Paula Stone. Don't forget, it's all about Pee Wee the Piccolo. And don't forget something else, too. Get your mom or dad to take you to the Melody Music Shop and listen to the Peter Church Mouse album. Oh, I'll bet they'll love it, too. See you Wednesday, then. Hello?